I'm excited tonight to, uh, I, w- I want to bring a message, a word from the Lord, if you would. Uh, have your Bibles with you. Hopefully you have them. And uh, you can open up your Bible to Hebrews chapter 6. And I, w- I want to really focus in really on just one verse tonight. And uh, we've been studying uh, probably the last uh, five or six weeks on uh, this portion of Scripture. And uh, if, you, if you go back and look, uh, uh, you'll see a really a series kind of. Uh, uh, but we've been really working on our foundation and uh, working on our foundation. We started out with, uh, what, you know, salvation, and then we went on through baptism. And, and uh, 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 tonight I want to kind of end up, uh, if you would, at, at a very important uh, uh, verse. And so let's look at Hebrews 6 and verse 3, okay? You can really read all of those verses if you want, and uh, if you're taking notes, it would be good to, to go back and reread that the Hebrews, the, the sixth chapter, and the first couple of verses, first several verses actually, uh, through for, verse four. But let's look at verse three. It says, it says this really powerful thing. We'll re- all read together. If you have it, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Uh, you can read from uh, any version you want, but I want to encourage you to read out loud with me as I read, and then, and then we'll pray. Uh, so let's read uh, Hebrews six and verse three. Only, okay? And you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three, go. And this will we do if God permit. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray right now that you'd open up our hearts, Lord, our minds, our eyes, and our ears, God, that we might see, hear, know, and understand something new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. You know, I, I've read that verse, uh, that little verse there, uh, many times. And uh, uh, I, if, if you, you may have uh, actually, uh, when, while you were reading it, I heard some of you say it. We seem to put on the end of the word permit an S, if God permits. But it's, it, it only says if God permit. Okay, and I, I just thought it was interesting, and we'll talk just a little bit about that as we, as we move on. But uh, I noticed in the, in the first few verses, uh, we didn't read all the verses tonight, but uh, uh, I almost want to go back just for a second to verse 1, and I want to really focus on the word perfection for just a moment. Uh, because most of us uh, are looking for perfection, right? In our mind, anyways. <laughs> we're looking for the perfect relationship. We're looking for the perfect uh, 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 son or daughter. We're looking for the perfect job. We're looking for the perfect place to live. We're looking for the perfect boat, the perfect car, the perfect motorcycle, the perfect lawn-cutting job, okay? I don't know what it is that we're looking for, but it seems like we're always looking for perfection. Uh, And and I I find it interesting because the word perfection really is something that maybe I will never, ever achieve in my own life, okay? I, 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 I can want to be perfect. I can want to think perfect thoughts. I can want to be the perfect Christian. I can want to be the perfect... Uh, uh, person, I can be want to be the perfect pastor, right? It even sounds good. Perfect pastor, come to see perfect pastor. He's preaching tonight. Perfect pastor is preaching. I mean, we could fill a church just with that that saying right there. But, but the work of the gospel, right? The job of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which we preach, which we read about, which we 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 hear proclaimed across the the land. It, the work of the gospel is 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 my direction to perfection, right? Kind of rhymes when I say it like that, but it's it's my direction for perfection. Now, now perfection in in me it, it might look different than perfection in you, okay? Because we get confused often with what is it that God is doing in me, and what is it that I want to see happen, right? We have this this tug of war almost between, in, in ourselves, but but we I can we can rest assured tonight that perfection is the goal of the gospel in my life. Amen? God is looking to perfect that which concerns Him, right? So whatever it is that, that God has placed in us, uh, and trust me, God has placed things in our lives. Uh, it, it, it might look like uh, playing a piano. It might look like preaching. It might look like laying hands on somebody. It might look at, like, like uh, sweeping the floor. It might look like shoveling snow. It might look like making a meal. It might like look like going to the hospital and visiting somebody. It's going to look like something that God has placed inside of you for a, for a purpose that it's bigger than your purpose. Amen? And God is looking to perfect the gift that you are supposed to be for the kingdom of God. 
all right? It might even look like eating, you know, <laughs> some of you. <laughs> but but, but the, 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 perf, the perfect work of God, the perfect work of the gospel in me, all right, is, is the goal of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I, I think it's imper- important for you to say that. Say, say this with me. Move me, okay? See, because often we want God to move them, okay? Or move her, or move him. But, 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 but the goal of Jesus is to move me, amen? Because I get so set in my ways. Maybe you're not like me. Maybe you're not set in your ways. Uh, I'm old enough to know, to, to know better about things and young enough to do something about it. But at the same time, am I willing to let God, let Jesus, let, let Jesus in me move me from where I am today to where I need to be for the kingdom of God's sake. Amen? I need to be willing to move on to perfection. Amen? I, I think it's important to, to, to understand that. I want to look at 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verse 11. It says, uh, uh, and some of you, um, it, it talk, it's speaking about, there's a list, actually, if you go up uh, uh, 10, 9, I think, into 8 uh, of that chapter, 1 Corinthians 6, you'll see, uh, uh, a list of things that we used to be or used to do or used to be a part of, okay? And then we got saved. <laughs> it, it's interesting that, that uh, uh, there's, there's almost a shift that happens when I get saved. And yet my, my flesh or who I used to be still haunts me, okay? It still seems to be tugging at me. And, and, you know, if I liked pizza before I got saved, I still like pizza. <laughs> if I, if I like you know, and, and we can go down the list. I'm, I just give you a little brief list there, one thing. But, but often we get saved and we, we expect to, to, to change. And sometimes we, we have a tendency or a, a willingness to go back and be a part of things that we once were. Amen? Uh, but, but, and it says, and so that's why it says at the, in, in 6 verse 11, it says, And of such were some of you. Mm. Of such were some of you. See, I was a sinner. But then I got saved and I became a saint, right? I, I once was lost, but now I am found. And the work of the gospel has begun. And then it says something really powerful. It, says, it uses this word, uh, but ye are washed, right? We've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I got saved. And then it says, but ye are sanctified. And, and sanctified is, is, a, is, is a term used, it's called, it's called setting apart, Right? Uh, God, God has called you. He has, he has washed you, all right? And he set you apart. He set you aside uh, for, for the work of the, of the kingdom, amen? Not, not for my work. I mean, I get up and work every day. Most of us get up and go to work every day. Most of us get up and do something every day. But, but we have been set apart. To poke your neighbor and say, yeah, you, you, even you have been set apart because you've been set apart for a purpose, for a purpose, for a purpose, uh, and then he says, but ye are justified. I, I love the, the, the buts because it's often, in, in, when you look at the but in, in the scripture there, it says, I, 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 I might have a problem, but, right? I might have had something, but, and, and, and most of us uh, are, 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 uh, had something in our life, but Jesus, right? Because of Jesus, right, I, I have been sanctified. Because of him, I have been justified. In the name of Jesus, right? Uh, and then it says in the last part of that verse, it says, "By the Spirit of God." See, the Spirit of God is important. I've been set apart, and then justified means I've been I've been uh, made right. Okay, I've been my my standing with God has been made right. I've been justified. Okay, and then it says by the Spirit. And so I, I, for us to remember that, all right, because often we, we have trouble remembering it, I give you three Ps, okay? Uh, position, God has positioned you, all right? He has uh, put you in a place, amen? A place, I'm in right standing with God, and then he, he wants to move you on to power, right? So we, we come to a place where we have power, okay? Power comes, uh, it's, it's funny, uh, often we think we have the power to do things in our life, and, 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 and we do have the power to get up in the morning. We have the power to turn the car to the right or to the left. We make choices and decisions. But real power is not of you, okay? It's not of you. It's not of you. It's, of, it's from God himself. God, if you want real power in your life, you need to get it from God. And the way it's going to come into your life is through the Spirit of God. 
Amen? It's not by any other means. It's not by what I say or don't say. It's not uh, how much praying I do or how much reading I do. I can't do all, all of those things. Don't, don't, don't justify me. Jesus justifies me. The blood of Jesus has justified me. He has, he has brought me to a place where I've been set apart, right? Justified. And then he, his, his desire is to, is to let his power fall on you for the work of the kingdom of God. You, you have a job to do. Amen? We're, we're all employees today, okay? Isn't that awesome? I think that's really good. But don't you see the progression there? The progression is position, place, power, okay? Pro- progression is position, place, power. Look at that. Uh, nothing broken, nothing missing, amen? He's bringing us to a place of wholeness, wholeness, right? And, and, and I don't really have time to go through all of that tonight, but he's trying to move us to a place where we can, all, we can experience it in our life, but it's not for us. It's to flow through us. Amen? It, it, the, the power of God is to flow through us. All right? Uh, <laughs> how are your relationships? Let's take inventory tonight. How are your relationships? Because if, if, if we look at our relationships in the earth and, and, the, and those that we, we have in our uh, close proximity, okay? Look at your relationships. And, and then now look at your relationship, okay? Do you got that picture in your mind? How does our relationships look? Take that same picture and, and, and add God into the mix. How is my relationship with God? And I'm going to tell you, most, most likely, your relationship with God is almost the same as your earthly relationships. It, it really is. We try to treat God the same way, and it's different, okay? Our relationship with God is different because... If, if I get my relationship right with God, I, 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 uh, we, we've said this for a long time, but if, if we're focused vertically, in other words, if our focus is on God, our horizontal relationships will get better automatically because my, my focus has changed, right? From what can I get from you? See, and, it, it, and often we think this way. I, I said it that way on purpose because often we, we say, what can I get from you? That's my focus, right? And then I take that focus and I put on God and I go, what can I get from you? And that's not what it's all about, all right? Because we're, we are to receive from him, but then we are to, what can I give to you, right? And so if I get that, that relationship right, then, then I'm not asking for things from others. I'm wanting to give what I have already received from my heavenly father, amen? I begin to give that out. Isn't, that's what being a Christian really is all about. It's, it's receiving something, and I have a whole message that I'm going to bring to you someday, uh, if, if the Lord permit, okay, if God permit, uh, about receiving. Because we, we must receive something before we can give away what we have. Otherwise, we're giving away something that's flawed, okay? And we want to give away what is not flawed. We want to give away what we receive from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's good preaching right there. I, 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 I want to say this. I want to say this verse. John 10, verse 27. And most of you know that verse if you hear, you hear me speak much. But it says, it says, my sheep hear my voice. Are you listening tonight? <laughs> I know them. There, there it is. And then we follow. See, see I, re- I, I have to hear. And then he knows me. The responsibility is on God to get to know you. Okay? It's not on you. It, it, yes, I have to be open to that. But I have to hear him. And then he knows me. And then all we do is follow him. Amen? That's what being a Christian is it, so hard, right? <laughs> it's actually so easy to be a Christian. Uh, hear, let him know you, and then follow. Do what he says. Amen? Uh, and then the next verse that I, that I looked at, we're still in verse 1, Hebrews 6, verse 1, uh, is, is foundation. All right? Perfection. The, work, the goal of the gospel in my life is to move me to perfection. Amen? To move me to perfection. And now, now I want to talk to you about the word foundation, okay? Foundation. I stand here tonight. I sit here, actually. I sit here on a, on, a, on a foundation that was laid by the apostles and by Jesus Christ himself. Amen? I don't, I don't sit here or stand here out of place or out of order tonight. I sit here uh, on, and I rest upon the foundation that was laid before I was even born. Amen? Uh, Jesus has... Has, has always brought us to a place. Jesus is the chief cornerstone, right? He's the chief cornerstone. If I want to, 
If I want whatever I need in my life, I should look to him for it. He's the source of, of all that I need. Amen? <laughs> I was sink, think, think about this. When I was a sinner, right, the Bible says that we were sinking in miry clay. We had no foundation. We, 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 needed, we, we needed a Savior. We needed, we needed someone to forgive me, someone to shed their blood for me, someone to save me, right? We need a Savior. But I was sinking in, I had, in hopelessness. I had no hope in the world. Ephesians says I have no hope in the world. I was without God, right? But, but I come to a place where I, I now have God, not, not just a God. I have the big G God, right? The, the big G God, the one that can supply all my needs, the one that speaks worlds into existence, the one that sends his presence, right? When we, when we worship him in the shower, in the car, wherever it is we go, anytime that my, my, I, would, I might even glance at him, I can feel his presence, amen? And his presence comes to create in me something, something new, amen? Something good. I was sinking, I was hopeless, and I had no foundation. Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 2, verse 20 and 22, it says, and, and we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And then I love this verse, verse 21, it says, Ephesians 2, 20, 21 through 20, 20 21, 22. Okay, three verses. Uh, but it says in verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth, Unto an holy temple of the Lord. I, I, I love the word fitly. Okay? Fitly. F-I-T-L-Y. Okay? It's a, it's a weird word, but what it is, if, if, you, if you look at your life as, a, as, as you're a rock, right? You're a stone. Uh, 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 Jesus has chiseled away. Fitly means chiseled away, shaped right, molded, and set into place perfectly. The builder does the work and sets the stone in its proper place for, for, uh, to make a building, right? Isn't it interesting that, that when we think about a building, we always think about stones or, or lumber or brick, but the kingdom of God is built of people, right? Not stones, people. So, so if God is working in my life, God is also working in your life. God is working in your life, in your life, in your life, in your life, in your life. And God is bringing all of the fit fitted stones, all the people, all the, the shaped right rocks or stones and placing them in the right place. And we think that we have to make something happen. <laughs> and that's not my job. My job is to set and rest on the foundation that Jesus has called uh, and brought to and brought us to. He's brought us to a place uh, where we can rest, right? And set on the foundation. And we've been fitted for the job. It's like I'm I'm fitted for a job. I'm in the I'm the right I'm the right person. I'm the right in the right place. My position is right. He he has shaped me just the right shape, okay? And set me in exactly the right position. Amen. You notice I'm using those words again if you're taking notes. And then it says in verse 22, in whom also ye are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Okay? Through the Spirit. The Spirit is working. The Spirit is working. The Spirit is working. He's, he's working it out for us. And we can understand that. A habitation for God. A habitation. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could sit here tonight and you could lift your hands like this and say, God, come inhabit the praises of your people. Okay? And it might be one person. You might be in a, in a dark room all by yourself. But, but the Spirit of God is going to come. All right? He's going to come and be a part of what he's already begun in your life. Amen? He's moving you. He's moving you. He's moving you. The direction of the gospel is always towards perfection. It may not feel good when you get a chip, chip off, a chip chipped off your shoulder, okay? Or you might, get, you, might get, uh, you might lose some relationship somewhere along the line, but God is working. God is working. God is working. Amen? 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 Fitly, fitly, fitly. Hmm. <laughs> I, I love the thought that God is working on all of us at the same time. Isn't that powerful? He's working on all of us. He's not, he's not only working on me. Oh, i got to go, go see Pastor Everett because you know, God's really working in his life. No, but God is working in all of our lives simultaneously. God is bigger 
than how I think. God is bigger than, than what I think he is. He's, he's better than, than who I think he is, okay? Uh, isn't that awesome? If, 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 it was, if God was subject to my thinking, boy, we'd be in trouble. Amen? Fitly, chosen, set apart, shaped just right. And all of us at the same time. I think that's really good. <laughs> can, can, you know, <laughs> turn, turn your neighbor and just say this. Say, God's really got his work cut out for him and you. <laughs> He's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> He's got a lot of work to do. Come on. <laughs> maybe, maybe you turn to the other neighbor and say, man, that's a lot of work. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Isn't it a great revelation, though, to know, to know that, that we are all being built up Right? The church is being built. Amen? The church is being built by God himself. I think it's a powerful thought when you think about that. Uh, let, let, let me talk to you just for a moment about the, about the gospel. Okay? Gospel. It says, uh, uh, preach the truth to all nations, right? To, to all people and in all places. <laughs> in me first, though. Amen? Let the truth come into my life first. Amen? Let it, let it come and be a part of me so that I can give it away. Not to have it. Because see, we, we, we often want truth in our own life. We want, we want something that I can have. But, but the gospel is, is, yes, it's for me, but it's really best when it's given away. Amen? As a matter of fact, that's the, 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 I think the heartbeat of Jesus Christ. When he was standing at Matthew 28, he said, he said Go ye therefore into all the world, preach and teach and, and just teach them everything I've told you, right? And all that I've said to you. Uh, and, and often in our own life, isn't it, isn't it powerful to think that, that, that the work that he's begun in me has, has only begun in me? And, and there's much, much more work that needs to be done in me until I can not think a wrong thought, not say a wrong word, not be a wrong person, but I can always be Christ, always be Jesus in every situation. In every place I go, <laughs> it's it's so it's so contrary to human nature. Think about this, right? <laughs> it's not about what's best for me; it's about what's best for Him. Amen. It's contrary to what I think about. It's contrary to, to what I I want to do. And He says, teaching, right? <laughs> He says something really comfort, comforting in Matthew 28 and verse 20. At the, towards the end, he says, I am with you always. I'm always with you. Jesus is always with me. Amen? Isn't it powerful when, just to say that? He's with me. Jesus is with me. Right? He's with me even unto the end of the earth. Amen? Uh, teach everybody that we are standing on a foundation, right? We're standing on a foundation, and we're already on the foundation. Amen. We're already there. I, 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 my my dad used to say this a long long time ago. He would say, "Practice what you preach." Right? Practice what you preach. Don't preach what you hope to be, because that's what we do. We say you ought to do, and maybe maybe you don't know how to do this, but. I think most of us can point out the fault in someone else really quickly and say, oh, you ought to be doing this, right? That's not preaching. Mm -mm. See, practicing what I preach is letting Jesus work in me first and then beginning to speak. Not, 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 not in, not in con uh, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, point down or, or look down my nose at you. I'm going to love you with the love of Christ that I have experienced in my, my life. Because you know what? I have just as many faults, probably more faults than you have. Okay? And God has been gracious, and God has been merciful to me, and God has brought me a mighty long way. Amen? And he's going to take me a long way. But don't practice, Pastor Everett, don't practice what you, don't, 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 don't preach what you hope to be. Practice what you're preaching. Amen? Be practicing it. All along. I say practicing because I haven't made perfection yet. Okay? I'm still practicing to preach. Amen? I'm still practicing to preach. That's, that's a powerful thought right there. I, I, I said all of that because I wanted to lay a little bit of a foundation tonight. 
But I, I, I want to say this to you. I want, I want to say this. If God permit, if God permit, I just want to preach to you just for a moment on, on, on if God permit. I, 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 I can feel the presence of God really strong right now. Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now, God is speaking to somebody. Do, do we need God's permission? Do we need God's permission? Can I sit here tonight and preach the word of God without God's permission? Hmm. Not effectively, no. I can talk, but I'm going to tell you right now, we must get to a place where we understand our position and we, we, we must have his permission, amen, to speak the word of God. We must have his permission to sweep the floor, okay? But w do we need God's permission? I'm going to say this, yes. We need God's permission, yes. Matthew 28 clearly says uh, go, right? He says go. He, it is God's will. It's Jesus' will for us to go and preach the word of God. Amen? Yes, it's his word, word, will to, for that. The doctrine, uh, the doctrine of Jesus uh, has, <laughs> has clearly and concisely spoken and taught us that. Amen? It's to go. It's to go. It's to go. It's to go. Yeah, your job is not to sit, 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 or to do nothing, nothing, nothing. Your job is to go, 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 all right, and preach. <laughs> Why do we need God's permission? Why do we need God's permission? I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> uh, if, let, let, me, let me just say it like this. If there is a kingdom, there is a king. Amen? Is that true? It's true. And if there's a king, he has to have a name, right? What, what's the name of the king of the kingdom? His name is Jesus. Amen? His name is Jesus. And, and, and we need to come to a place. If, 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 I just want to say this right. If I was going to build a building, if I was going to build a building and I was going to go out and I was going to rent a big backhoe and a, and a bulldozer and I was going to start to clear the land and I was going to start to lay a foundation and I was going to build whatever it is we're going to build, a skyscraper, doesn't matter. I couldn't build that building unless I get a permit, right? Somebody has to agree to the plan. Somebody has to agree to the plan. And, and I'm going to tell you that Jesus is not building a building made of stone and mortar, brick and mortar. He's building it with people, and he has a plan that I don't understand, okay? Is it okay to say that I don't understand the plan that God has in my life? And it's true, we don't. We don't understand it because we only understand what we want to understand. We only think the way we want to think. We only want to do what we think we want to do, right? But, G but Jesus, but God himself is going to permit us to do what is according to his plan and his purpose, for, for his glory, for his honor. That's what, that's what being a Christian is all about. Do I need a permit? Do I need his permission? And I'm going to say, yes, yes, you do. Right? <laughs> I, I, I love this story in Acts. Acts 22, verse 7 through 10. Paul is on his way. Paul, Paul, his name was Saul, because his name wasn't changed to Paul until after this encounter. But Saul was on his way to persecute the church. He was on his way to do the religious thing. In that day, he was justified in his religion, okay? But, but he was on his way, and he was met by a bright light one day that shone down, and, and so bright that he fell to the ground. And, he, and Paul said, he asked two questions, right? Who are you? Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? I want your permission. I don't know who you are, but, but you're obviously God. <laughs> you're obviously greater than me, right? And what do you want me to do? Those two questions. He had an encounter with God, and then he said, I want your permission. And then there, the voice said, go, go to the next town. Somebody's going to come pray for you. Your eyes are going to be open. And then you're going to go do whatever it is I tell you to do from then on. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be powerful if, if we could be like, like Saul changed to Paul? Because I, I, was, I was a sinner, but now I'm a saint. Right? <laughs> I was lost, but now I'm found. I didn't see. I was blind, but now I see. And I want to know what it is that you want me to do. What have you called me to do? What have you brought me all this way to do? Why did you bring me to a living room, set me on a stool in front of a camera, and ask me to speak? 
What, what are you doing, God? And I'm going to tell you right now, if we'll begin to look uh, in, in, into the eyes, begin to look into the eyes and receive direction from God, we will find ourselves permitted to do the work that He has called us to do. I am following Jesus. Amen? I'm following Jesus. <laughs> I, I, think it's, I think it's really powerful. Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? I think it's two really good questions. Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? Maybe, maybe we should just stop there for a second. Who, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? <laughs> He's not who you think he is. <laughs> Come on. He's bigger than you. He's greater than you. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the one that thought about you before the foundation of the world. He's the one that loves you more than life itself. He's the one that gave himself for you. Amen? He's the one that, who, who loves you. We talked about last week. All of eternity. My, my, love, my love for you will last eternity, he says. He says, I'm gonna, I've got you. Take my hand. I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm going to take you to a place. Right? I'm going to take you to a place that I have not seen, ear has not heard, the things that, are, that I have prepared for those that love me. Right? But we have to come to a place where we're willing to give up our life. We're willing to say, who are you? What do you want me to do? I need your permission in my life, God. I need your permission in my life. I just want to wrap it up really quick here. I want to wrap it up. And this is my first and only close tonight, okay? I promise. I won't close for five times. I did that on Sunday, actually. I closed five times on a Sunday. On Sunday, I just couldn't stop talking. But, but I couldn't stop talking because God was moving. Amen? And if God is going to move, I'll speak. If God is going to move, I'll sing. If God is going to move, I'll worship Him. Okay? I'm going to do whatever it is He wants me to do. Amen? Who are you, Lord? And what would you have me to do? <laughs> I, let me just give you one more word. Permission slip. Permission slip. You know, when I was, when I was growing up, and I was in school, I was in elementary school, they, they would, uh, uh, I would say, uh, can I go to the bathroom? And, you know, they would give you a, a, a stick or a permission slip. Or a lot of times they would give us a note, you know, and we would walk out into the hallway on our way to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, right, okay. And then when the principal or the, the guard would see you in the hallway, they would say, hey, what are you doing? Hey, I got a permission slip, <laughs> Okay. And it was like, oh, okay, right? It's like, like all of the world revolved around our ability to have a permission slip, right? It was, it was crazy because, you know, you could get away with all kinds of things if you had a permission slip. It, it might say bathroom, but it didn't say what floor the bathroom I was going to, you know. <laughs> I was in the lunchroom, you know, checking out what was going on for lunch. But permission slip. If you ever look at the word permission, all right, permission Per mission, break it up, take P-E-R off of that and look at mission. What is our mission? Our mission is to go ye therefore into all the world and preach, teach, and make disciples. Amen? Per mission. Look at that. I am going per mission, right? Uh, the mission that God has given me, the work that God has prepared for me in my life, I am working according to the mission that he has given me. Amen? He's given me a mission, right? <laughs> I have permission to go on the mission. Amen? I have permission to go on. I sit here tonight. I sit here under the authority of Almighty God in Jesus tonight. And I speak the word of God to you, wherever you are. I speak the word of God to you. I've been bought and paid for. Right? I don't have to make excuses. I've been sanctified. I've been set apart. I have been made holy. Right, Not by myself, not by own, my own works, but by the working of Jesus Christ in my life. Amen? I stand here bought and paid for. You know, you know <laughs> sanctified means to make legitimate. Right? I am not a, a bastard son. Right? I have been adopted by Jesus. I am a son of God. Amen? I... I I demand my rights as son. Amen? I, I, I am been made free from sin, not because I have the ability to, to do it myself, but because I have received Jesus into my life. I have been made free from sin. 
Jesus is my trespass offering for my sin. Lord, forgive me of my sin. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. Now I can walk forward like I have never sinned before. Amen? I have been made new in Christ. Old things have passed away. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, All things have become new. Amen? All things have become new. But I want to go a step further tonight with you. I want to go just a little deeper. If you got it, just a second. If you can lean in just for a second. And we always talk about Romans 8.28. It says, <laughs> it says, All things work together for good to those that, know, that love God and are the called according to His purpose. Amen? We know that. We know that. But, but I, I love that part where it says, To them who are the called according to His purpose. Right? So, so Jesus is calling. Right? He's calling because he has a purpose in your life. Jesus is calling because he has a purpose in your life. That's why, that's why we have to hear him, right? Uh, John 10, verse 27. Though my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow. Amen? He's calling us. He's calling us. He's calling us. And then it says, he did foreknow. <laughs> I, I love this because foreknow is a word that says, before I was even born, before I was even looking for God, before I even knew to look for God, he was already looking at me. Isn't that powerful? He was already looking at me before I even knew to look for him. He was looking. He was looking. I, I love the fact that, that God is a planner because God plans the intricate details of our life out, and I can prove it to you because he knows the number of hairs you have on your head. And that's so powerful when you think about that. Only the beloved person, right? It, it, it's, it'd be weird if I walked up to you tonight not knowing who you are and I began to touch your hair on your head, right? It'd be weird. But, but it's not weird that God would touch the hair on your head because how's he going to count all the hairs in your head if he doesn't run his fingers through it? Think about that. He's intimately involved with every intricate detail of your life. And you can trust him. Amen? He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. You can trust him. And, for no, and then he says he predestined, right? In other words, he prepared a way for me and to bring me to a place. Amen? To the perfect place, the perfect position, right? So that his, his kingdom can be built through my life. Amen? He's longing to do something. He's got a plan. Amen? He has a plan. He, he knew it before I was born, before I even looked for him. He had a plan. Um, I've been predestined to this, to this moment, to this, this, this exact moment. Right? And then it says a word very powerful. It says conformed. In other words, he's going to mold me. He's going to break me. He's going he's to mess with me a little bit. He's going to make me the, uh, be conformed to his image. Amen? Not my image. Not my vision of what I think he's doing, but his image. It's a confirmation. <laughs> Come on. If, if God is working in your life, he's molding, he's conforming, he's changing you. Amen? It's confirmation that he's working. He's working. Amen? Uh, and moreover, it says, I love that word moreover because I already said all of those neat little things, but moreover, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> it's like Paul repeating himself. I don't know if you've ever been married before, but often you get words repeated to you. Uh, <laughs> Those people that he did predestine, those people that he did predestinate to be, to be in a certain place, them he also called, right? He's calling, he's calling, he's calling. Uh, <laughs> and then them he also justified. Jesus, the blood of Jesus justifies me. I stand here in right standing with God because I've been justified. Amen? <laughs> and them he also glorifies. Amen? It's only as if God is taking us and he's working, in, he's working on us. He's working on us. He's, he's calling us. He's calling us. He's predestined us. He's predestined us. And then, he, and then he's, he's glorifying us, right? He's justifying us, and then he glorifies us as if he sets us up on a pedestal. Doesn't it sound like a fitly stone being placed in the right position? Doesn't that what that sounds like? Amen? It's, we're being placed in the right position for his glory. For his glory. We've been brought all this way so that he can do only what he could do through all of those things. He brought us to this place, to this moment, to make a choice. To rest on the foundation. Amen? To rest on Jesus. And then it says this really powerful thing. It says, if God be for us, who can be against us? <laughs> if I have the permission of God Almighty to sit in this chair, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm going to tell you the answer. Nobody, nothing, no how. I sit here tonight with permission. Come on. I 
sit here with permission. See, I don't need your permission. I have God's permission. I don't need to get a permit from you because I got a permit from Him. <laughs> He's above all. Amen? Amen? I, I wrote this down. I, I, I just want, maybe if you're taking a note or not. I wrote this down. I don't sit here tonight. I don't have a lack of regret, okay? But I have an identity. <laughs> I have been created for the work of Jesus Christ. Amen? That is my position tonight. That is your position tonight. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? God has put so much work into us. He's, he's put so much work into us. Matter of fact, he gave himself for us. He gave himself for us. I, I, I wonder if I could change your identity just for a second. Could I, could I just shift your thinking? We are his asset. We are God's asset. He's done a lot of work on us. He's put us in the right place. And he's, he, he's going to move us in the right position so that he can do the right thing. Amen? Amen? Let me, let me just pray with you. Uh, let, me, let me just say one more thing before I, before I pray. When I, when I was younger, and I was in school, in elementary school, I, I remember we used to sit in the classroom and there would be pretty girls in the classroom. Okay, And sometimes I would sit there and I would write a little note, uh, and uh, I would write, uh, I'd really throw myself out there, you know. I'd have this little note, and I would say, do you like me? And I would make a, a check, yes or no, and I'd make a box, and it said yes, and I'd make a box that said no. And then we would pass the note to the one up there, and they'd pass it around to people, and then they'd come back. And, and often the note would say no. <laughs> because we were in elementary school and you know boys are yucky and that when I, when and girls are yucky at that time in your life but but you're always looking for uh affirmation or or you're looking for uh someone to like you okay but did you know that if you ever got the note back that said yes what would happen in my life I'll tell you what happened in my life if I would ever get the note back that said yes well my posture would change I would begin to act different because I know that I'm liked, right? Isn't the same thing true as a Christian? If we know the answer is yes, if we know that Jesus loves us, shouldn't our posture change? Shouldn't we know that we have permission? Amen? Shouldn't we know that we have a work in our, to do in our life? Shouldn't we know... Doesn't it just change everything? The box is checked yes tonight. It's yes. The answer is yes. Amen? Amen? Let me just pray. Lord, I just pray right now that the, as the word has gone forth or as it flowed through me, God, I pray that your will would be done. That you would go and knock off the, the rough edges and you would shape us that we might be conformed to your image tonight. And Lord, that you would bring us to a place where you set us down on the foundation that has been prepared before the, before the world even began. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to trust you. And beyond that, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to know that we have your permission. And Lord, we give you permission in our life. Come, come and fill this place. Come and transform me. Come and make us, Lord, who we need to be. Lord, that the kingdom of God could become exactly according to the drawing that you've already made. <laughs> we may not see the picture, Lord, but we, we, want to, we want to build your picture of what perfection is in our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. God is so good tonight. Amen.